If you didn't already know, the Mate 20 is the smaller, but actually physically bigger brother of the Mate 20 Pro, offering a similar, but in many respects, different experience for a slightly lower price tag. The problem with the Mate 20 Pro from the outset is why would you choose this over the Pro model? Well, for starters, it does cost a couple of hundred dollars less and is a slightly bigger handset. For your savings, you get a 6.53 inch full HD plus notch display, although that teardrop notch is how to do it if at all. The IPS panel is okay, not exceptional, but it is sharp, gets bright and has decent viewing angles. It's also HDR compliant, so video viewing on that 187 by 9 aspect ratio display will be great from the outset. Inside the device packs in the same Kirin 980 found in the Pro, but with slightly less RAM at 4GB, although you can get a 6GB model too for parity with the Mate 20 Pro. Those internals mean that this device seriously packs a punch, except it does run EMUI. That said, this is the Android Pie variant. I personally like lightly modified skins, but EMUI is quite the overhaul. It will be interesting to see how this device fares over the course of the next 12 months, and if it remains just as snappy as it does right now. I still don't like the out of the box page navigation, but as it was pointed out to me in the Mate 20 Pro video, you can change this in the settings to an app drawer if you'd like to do so. Then there's the cosmetic alterations, which aren't what I personally like, but you can achieve a decent look with a third party launcher. Usually you see downgrades in certain areas, but the Mate 20 has one piece of hardware not found on the Mate 20 Pro, and that is the headphone port. I don't like the up top positioning personally, but I'm glad that there is an option to plug in a pair of headphones if needed. Round back there is the familiar camera layout, but it has been downgraded just a little bit. The camera array is still great for a wealth of different photography. You get a 12 megapixel standard lens, a 16 megapixel wide angle, and an 8 megapixel telephoto lens. This isn't too much of a step down, but the pictures aren't quite as good as those taken with the Mate 20 Pro. Night mode is here as well, and it works exceptionally well given the lighter hardware. Overall, the camera is very impressive thanks to how versatile it is. The video modes are slightly less impressive in all honesty. There is 4K video recording here at up to 30 FPS with no optical image stabilization. And then beyond that, there is 1080p, 60 and 30 FPS modes too, but you can also record 960 FPS 720p slow-mo footage if you wish. I think one key area and certainly not lacking with any new Huawei device is the battery life and the Mate 20 Pro packs in a 4000 mAh battery that chugs along just like a champ. I'm sure you'll see battery life reach in two days if you are an average user. And then if you are a power user, 67 hours of screen on time are absolutely par for the course on everyday usage. Included in the box is a 22.5 watt charger which can take you from 0 to 60% in around about 40 minutes. Which is not quite as good as the Mate 20 Pro's 42 watt charge brick but it's still plenty fast enough. Beyond that, what more can I say about this phone? Well, not a great deal to be quite honest with you. It kind of sits in a sort of gap between the high mid range and then the high end. If budget is tighter and you fancy saving a few hundred pounds or a few hundred dollars, then I think it might well be worth considering. Even with that said, I would still say get the Mate 20 Pro over this for a complete Huawei experience. So even with all that said, if you'd like to check it out, then I'll leave some links in the description. Remember to subscribe to the channel for more Android and Google focused content just like this. But this is Damien for 9to5Google saying thanks again for watching and I'll speak to you later.